Good morning, everybody. It's me, Dr. Ballard. It's Dr. Ballard! He's back! I'm back. How are you, Jacob? I'm great. I miss you. I miss you, too. I miss you all, and I miss Word of the Day. Yeah, what happened to Word of the Day? You notice what happened to Word of the Day? It disappeared. It disappeared, yes. Yeah, so it's come back with... So it, to what do we owe this honor? Well, uh, we're, today we're going to be talking to a friend of mine, Ambassador Kathleen Stevens. Oh. And the Word of the Day is related to her. Uh, and to me, and to... She has a relation who's a paper and a word? Yes, absolutely. Wow. So um, so let's just start right with the word. So you guys, here comes the word of the day. You may have seen this word before. I don't know. It relates to Ambassador Stevens. Hey, Tayshawn, have you seen this word before? I didn't see the word. Well, what, you don't have x-ray eyes? No. Oh, the suspense is killing me! Peace Corps. Peace Corps. Oh, Peace Corps. <laughs> oh they're all right. Are you sure? Yes. Peace Corps. Peace Corps. Wow. So you, that was pretty fast. That was pretty fast. I want to ask, I just wanted to clear up, how do you say this word here, please? Corps. Uh, I hear some people saying many different things. How do you say this word here? Corps. So you, put, you say, pronounce this whole thing the same way. Corps. No, no, no. What's this word here? Or. So say, say, pronounce it the same way, the exact same thing up there, please. Or. And then put this in front. Corey. This No. Or. What's this word again? Or. So say this part here the exact same way. Say all of that the same way. Cool. Yes, you say it. Cool. Now say the whole thing. He's cool. Say it to the camera really loud. He's core. He's core. Wow. Yeah. So um, <laughs> we, have, we have well, uh, Ambassador Stevens will explain that, and she will also explain what it exactly is the U.S. ambassador. Oh. Go ahead, Ambassador. Stevens. Oh, well, thank you very much. It's very nice to be with you today. Um, the Peace Corps is uh, the name of a a, a group. That, uh, that Dr. Ballard and I uh, uh, were both members of a long time ago after we graduated from college. Oh, not so long ago. Not so long ago. Actually, you know what? It was 40 years ago. Ah! That was a long time ago. It was a pretty long time ago. I can't believe that. But you probably can't figure out how old we are. You don't need to do that. No. Like it was about 40. No, it was a long time ago. And that's a picture of me in the middle there when I was in the Peace Corps. That's in wow. Korea. And, and that, that's where I lived, and those were my students. And they were they were about twelve years old then. They were in about sixth yeah. or seventh grade. And while we're at it, just who who is who are you with here, please? Well, I know him. Yeah. So that's a few years later, and that's when President Obama came to visit Korea. And at that time, that's me as ambassador. So now I'm wearing my ambassador outfit. Wow, and that's, fancy. Uh, yeah, very fancy. And uh, and nice the man buttons. on the other side of President Obama is the the leader of the U.S. military forces in Korea, because we have we have a U.S. military presence there too. Do you hear that, Miss Davis? <laughs> so so. Uh, you asked me what an ambassador does, I'll get back to the Peace Corps, but uh, an ambassador uh, uh, represents our country overseas. Uh, so in Korea, I was President Obama's representative, because he doesn't live in Korea, right? Where does President Obama live? In the White House. Exactly. You all have, what, the, the White House? United States. United States? Washington. Washington. Three parts of a three-part right answer. You guys are smart. <laughs> so actually in that picture, President Obama is going back to Washington. I remember this picture because he'd stayed for two days in Korea and then he uh, he said, I'm really anxious to go back and see my daughter's uh, school play. So he was getting on the plane on Air Force One to go back to Washington. You mean but, he put family ahead of, uh, ahead of his job? Know, he, Imagine that. <laughs> he really cares about his daughters and he really cares about education. And one no. thing he was really interested in talking about in Korea was education. But he can't be in, a, he can't be in Korea all the time, right? So he left me behind in Korea along with General Sharp, and our job there was to do a lot of things that ambassadors do, which is to help out the Americans who are in the country, and also try to understand better what's going on in Korea. And one of the reasons I was ambassador in Korea was because 40 years ago I lived in Korea, and I learned to speak Korean, so President Obama thought maybe that would help me to understand better what was going on in Korea, how we could help Americans do business there, how we could help Koreans 
uh, improve their economy, how we could work together on many of the problems that affect both our countries. So that's kind of what an ambassador does. And, uh, and there's another picture, since we're looking at pictures, of uh, also when I was ambassador, uh, uh, some, another important visitor visiting Korea. This is in Korea. Do you know who that is? Is that right? Very good. That's right. Hey, Tayshawn, score one for you. And she was my boss because she was, oh. do you remember what job she had? She doesn't have it anymore because she may, she's looking for another job now, I hear. <laughs> but she was the Secretary of State. That's not our word of the day. So she was my boss. She was in charge of all the ambassadors along with President Obama. So she also came to visit Korea to help me in my work and for me to help her in her work too of helping to improve the understanding and ties between the people of Korea and the people of the United States. So that's what an ambassador does and that's wow, I like the people you work with. Yeah, that was pretty fun when they came, but a lot of times when they weren't visiting, you know what was even more fun? What? Was meeting Koreans. Oh, and bring any of them along? Korean. Today I didn't, but I hear that there's a lot of people at the school who know something about Koreans and, and, and speaking Korean. So I hope some of them will become ambassadors too. But anyway, it all started back with the Peace Corps, and uh, Bruce, uh, Dr. Ballard can tell you a lot about the Peace Corps, too, because he worked in the Peace Corps in, in Korea and also in other countries. And I think it's a great way for young people, because 40 years ago, I was young. I was probably hard to imagine. You still are. Yeah, thank you. You're a nice guy. Everyone said you were not nice. Yeah, you are, Mr. Jacobs. He's pretty nice. <laughs> Say some more nice things. Anyway, 40 years ago, when I was pretty young in that picture, that this... Going into the Peace Corps was a chance for me to go outside of, of the United States. I hadn't spent much time outside the United States, living in a place where they didn't speak English, where the, I had to sleep on the floor because that's what people do. That's, uh, and, uh, and I had to teach in a school with those students who had very different lives than the lives that I grew up with. So I learned a lot about that and that helped me to become an ambassador later. All right, so we have some questions now from the students. Who's going to ask the first question? My name is Tayshawn Smith from 4B. Hi, Tayshawn Smith. What did you do to get into Harvard, and what was it like there? At Harvard? Oh. At Harvard? You well, tell us I, that. I, I, what? Thank you for asking. Um, I actually went to Harvard um, uh, after I'd already worked for a few years, and I think what helped me to get into Harvard was the fact that I had had some experience in the Peace Corps and also working uh, in other countries and uh, Harvard thought that was an interesting experience and so I think that helped me as much as getting good grades and what I had done in school earlier to go to Harvard. Um, so that was a really good experience for me to be able to go and uh, have a little more education, not right after I graduated from college but about five or ten years later. Do you want to go to Harvard? Yeah. There's a lot of great schools. There's a You're lot of great schools. It. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> next, who's next? Okay. My name is Sam from 3A. And after college, you volunteered in the Peace Corps. Can you explain to me now what the Peace Corps is? Yeah. Um, well, the Peace Corps was something that was started by President Kennedy. Have you heard about President Kennedy? Mm -hmm. Right? He was our president, uh, again, pretty long time ago now, almost 50 years ago. Oh. And, and, but one of the things that he did in his rather short presidency uh, was he started this thing called the Peace Corps. And the idea was to send young Americans, like Dr. Ballard and me, and maybe you someday, overseas. So we could get some experience getting to know other countries, that we could try to help in those countries. And in this case, I, I tried to help by teaching, but also so we could learn something about it and bring it back. So. Uh, so that's what the Peace Corps uh, was when, when President Kennedy started it. And today, the Peace Corps still goes on. You know, a lot of things after two or three or ten years, people get tired of them, they stop, or another president comes to office and says, oh, I want to do it differently. But the Peace Corps has grown and grown. And I think it's really one of the very best things that, um, uh, that came out of President Kennedy's presidency and one of the very best uh, uh, programs from Washington, D.C. that we've ever had. So I hope you'll think about the Peace Corps someday. Would you like to live outside the U.S. someday, do you think? Say yes, Jim. Maybe. Maybe? <laughs> Where would you like to be if you, if you could pick a country now? I think since it's where my mom grew up, I think I might do Russia. Yeah, Ooh. very interesting. Well, Peace Corps has actually been, at, in, in the years past, has been active in parts of the former Soviet Union and Eastern Europe, too. Very interesting. 
Um, my name is Precious from Class 3C. Hello, Precious. While working in Korea, what did you learn about Korean culture? Oh, my goodness. Mm. Loaded How long, question. A loaded question. What did I, I learned that Korean culture um, required, or uh, was very different from American culture. I learned that it was more um, formal. You know what I mean by formal? Um, like maybe in your Korean class, it was it some of the things you do there show the Korean culture. Like for example, every time I went into the classroom, all the students stood up very straight and they had to bow to the teacher. I like that. Yeah, and you have to bow to Mr. Jacobs, you know. I yeah, I'm sure every do you bow to your teachers? Yep, all the time. I had to bow to the teachers, and also if the students saw us somewhere um, on the street just after class or something because teachers were very respected, as I'm sure they are here. The teachers had to stop and bow to us too. And not only bow, they had to say, can I help you with anything? So if I could say, oh, you know, my bag is really heavy. Could you help me take this home? They would do that. What? So one thing I learned about Korean culture is they really value education. And because teachers bring education, they really respect teachers. So that was nice. It was a nice place to be a teacher. Um, but, uh, you know, there's a lot I learned about Korean culture. And I think the best way to learn about it was, first of all, learn the language. And secondly, this was much easier, eat the food. <laughs> and through that way, I learned a lot about Korean culture. I know that most Korean names have meaning behind them. Yeah. What's your Korean name and what does it mean? Oh, oh. that's a great question. Um, I, my Korean name is Shim, is my last name, because the last name comes first in Korea, and then Unggyung. So my given name is Unggyung. And the, there are different Chinese characters for that, because it comes from Chinese. Uh, but my name means uh, Graceful City. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And you know what? I was thinking about uh, uh, if you went to Korea, you'd have a Korean name. And sometimes you try to make it sound like your real name. So your name is uh, Taishan Smith. Mm -hmm. So I think your Korean name, Smith, would probably be like Shin. And then I would say Taishan could be Taesan. And that means Big Mountain. Oh. Brings new meaning to the word, the Hobbit comes to the mountain. That's right. So you could, you could tell people your Korean name is Big Mountain if you wanted to. That would be Taesan. So Korean names are kind of fun that way. Um, what did you do when you served in the U.S. missions? In the U.S. missions? Um, I served in American, the missions are, are American offices overseas. Um, so uh, they're embassies or sometimes they're called consulates. I did many different jobs over many years. Sometimes my job was to uh, help people who wanted to, or try to help them, who wanted to travel to the United States to see their families or maybe come here to live. Like you said, your family was from Russia. Someone in your family had to go to the American Embassy to apply for permission to come here. So people like me would try to help that process. Or I would try to help Americans who were living there, maybe had, had children there, and wanted to bring them back, or got, got sick while they were traveling, we'd help with that. But other times what I would do is try to understand what was going on in the country, kind of like you do if you work for a newspaper, and try to tell President Obama and Secretary Clinton and people in Washington, you know, we need to pay a little more attention to the fact that there's uh, trouble in a part of the world, and here's why there's trouble, and here's what it means for us. So there's a lot of things I would do at the mission, but those are a few of them. Sounds like um, such an important job. And a lot of fun. We should uh, turn, turn, we have we have to turn it over now to the second graders who are going to sing a song for Ms. Uh, Ambassador Stevens. It's one of my very favorite songs. Did you know that, Bruce? I, yes, I okay. did. Know Wait, that. you know this song they're going to sing? I do. And, oh, you know, my goodness. Do you know it? No, I don't. I'm shocked that you knew. That's amazing. Can I sing it with you? Softly. I don't sing very well. I'll sing softly. Chariot, Kyungne. Yolo bun, han yo ha se yo. Okay, tumbuk, 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 say, she ja. Tumbuk, 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 say, no less I will go. Paku, 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 say, supes I will stay. Uri upa mai tabu sa wil ga shimyang pira kuru sa ga shiu 
Yes. The the birds are singing. Bokuk Bokuk is a cuckoo bird, but it, and a uh, cuckoo bird in Korean doesn't say cuckoo. It says Bokuk Bokuk. So Bokuk said. The birds are singing. My older brother went to Seoul, like to Manhattan. He went to the city. My older brother went to Seoul, but he hasn't come back yet. And he promised me he would buy me silk slippers, and I haven't gotten anything. Is that is that what you know? I'm sorry, I took your song away from you, but I understood every word you sang. So I had to I had to tell people who maybe haven't learned that song yet. Is that the way you learned the song? Did I get it right? Yes. Do you like yes. this song? Yes. yes. Thank you very much. So uh, thank you, Precious. You need to go to Manhattan and get me some silk slippers. <laughs> Come yeah, back with silk slippers. So now we turn it over to Mr. Jacobs, and he has some closing thoughts. Let's okay. bow, though. Let's bow to our principal. Thank oh. you very much, uh, Dr. Ballet. Thank you, yeah. Ambassador Stevens for being with us this morning. Thank you, boys and girls. You know, I'm looking at your photograph over there beside the president, and guess who I'm seeing? Margaret Thatcher. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Another powerful woman. Yeah, yes, um, yes, powerful woman. Um, thank you again for coming to be with us and for sharing your experience. It's interesting that even the birds in Korea speak Korea. <laughs> Yes. Um, so, so in keeping with our bird theme, the quote for the day comes from William Blake who says, No bird soars too high if he soars with his own wings. Have yourselves a wonderful day.